booth. And also good morning or good evening out there to everybody who is joining the live stream. This is our first live talk for today and for K2019. And I'm very happy that we have an interesting topic and two very interesting experts uh, with me here today. With me here is Eike Messo. He's the head of sustainability at Sto. We will learn a bit more about what Sto is doing later. And Nicole Kambeck, she's a specialist for sustainable construction at BASF. Good morning. Great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. So the live talk is called uh, Closing the Gap on track towards a circular economy for EPS. That sounds a bit like a contradiction because some people still think that EPS boards are harmful waste which can't be recycled. Uh, can you tell us a little more because you at Sto you manufacture insulation systems like this one which include EPS boards. So you know all about it. Absolutely right. I mean, we know that this discussion has been going on for quite a few years now. And the background is, of course, the whole concept of sustainable development. And within that, the discussion about circularity. So the discussion in itself is appropriate. And there is no doubt that we have to deal with this theme and with our products and how to bring them into a circular economy. On the other hand, what I miss is the greater picture and uh, a closer look at the whole life cycle of such products and why it's not so easy to just produce them and then recycle them and take them back uh, into new products. Mm -hmm. um, Nicole, can, can you tell us a little more about this life cycle? Are there different phases, stages? Exactly. So. Um when you look at the life cycle of such an ethics system, we start at the raw material production. And here, uh, for instance, within BSF, we look on the right raw material selection. Mm -hmm. So um, currently, I would say a new trend are raw materials based on uh, renewable mm -hmm. sources, like we use it uh, with our biomass balance uh, Neopore product. Uh, but also um, the use of recycled content is also another trend, no matter which kind of waste sources we have, but this is definitely something which will come. Um, for sure, this will take time yeah, um, to do the right raw material selection. It's not that you have it from one day to another, um, because you have to assure that the technical performance still stays the same, then you have the, the cost uh, uh, yeah, challenge, of course, yeah. and also when you go for uh, a right selection of raw materials, you would like to have something which has a reduced carbon footprint. And here you have to be transparent what will be the re reduction of the carbon footprint. And um, of course, we are working on this via our life cycle mm. assessment approaches. Mm. So, so stage one first phase selection of the right raw materials with the target to reduce the, the carbon footprint in that. How does it continue? What's the next step? And well, let's take a look at history first because it's quite interesting to learn and most people forget that this EPS board and the whole ethics system has not been developed in order to recycle. It has been in, <laughs> developed in order to perform at a building. Mm -hmm. And you also need to remember the first ethics in the 60s they have come into place because the board is a very good surface to applicate our products. Mm -hmm. And only later in the 70s um, came the thermal insulation okay. into play. Okay. And then of course in the 80s and 19s the whole thing grew up and now we are where we are at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the second thing that we need to know it's all about performance. Mm -hmm. Our people when they use our products at a construction mm -hmm. Uh, be it renovation or be it a new building, it's all about durability. durability. Mm -hmm. It's about workability, mm -hmm. so it has to be lightweight for the workers and yeah. so on. And then it's about performance in terms of uh, great thermal insulation. Mm -hmm. And it's also about um, quality and yeah. safety in terms of uh, weather, uh, uh, which is also an element and so of durability. And so on. Yes, that comes into yeah. play. And only if we talk about, okay, in cases where we do have a building that is being renovated and the facade system is going to be demolished, mm. then we talk about how can we close the circle mm. and how can we uh, improve in terms of recycling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, of course, I can tell you more about where we are at, at mm -hmm. this stage, mm -hmm. but it's always important to remember 
it's not a product that is going out there and put into place and has a life cycle yeah. or a lifetime of let's say a few months or a year. It's really about 50 years or even up to 100 years. Okay. Even the early six, uh, systems from the 60s, they are still, are still in place, in place. Mm -hmm. and the material has not disappeared or vanished. Mm -hmm. By the way, one reason why it is difficult for us to use biodegradable renewable mm -hmm. uh, material uh, because we don't want this material to disappear on the wall. Yeah, no, of course, I can imagine. But, but still, you say that um, 50 years, sometimes 60 years, even the, the early insulation systems are still in place, still performing and working, but also after 60 years, there is an after-use phase. So are there any new developments in, in that phase? What happens when it's over? Yeah, so I would say, um, first of all, new developments are already in place regarding recycling of uh, cut-off. Mm -hmm. So when we have uh, here the, the poor EPS, yeah, mm -hmm. this is already co uh, collected um, at the construction site. Um, so you can see it when you walk along the streets. You can see uh, big polyethylene bags, uh, for instance, in, in Germany. And yeah. these cutoffs are collected and uh, you can do regranulate out of it. So as we see it here, for instance, mm -hmm. Um, one sourcing material could be uh, from, from uh, EPS building and construction, but also for EPS packaging waste, this mm -hmm. is not uh, a big issue. But yeah, as I said, the challenge is really the use phase. And uh, currently, of course, we don't have uh, many amounts of waste available. Yeah. And uh, we are currently um, yeah, working together with solvent-based recycling technologies mm -hmm. that are starting to, to be developed now um, mm -hmm. for the future. And um, these recycling technologies work with a solvent where you can dissolve EPS um, and then it's precipitated and you have also kind of polystyrene regranulate like mm -hmm. we have here. Okay. Uh, hopefully, yeah, as clean as it is here so it that we can clean. use it yeah. in our extrusion process. Mm -hmm. um, but that is... Um, the idea in general, but this is also under development and will take some time. Yeah, how much? <laughs> Can we say that? Is, is there any amount already commercially available? Are you piloting it, using it already? Well, if you ask me about the time mm -hmm. and, and how quick we can be, my answer is if you take the money and you don't take a look at the profitability mm -hmm. of the recycling schemes, mm -hmm. we can do it within two years. If you really want to be profitable, it's a different story. Yeah. Why? Because we don't get this material on the market. Mm -hmm. Luckily, that mm -hmm. means our quality is good and the buildings are still there. They're not being demolished. The systems are in place and working. And nonetheless, of course, we have to do our house homework mm -hmm. and we need to improve. And what we see within the recycling processes is, of course, the aim has always to be uh, and to have pure uh, fractions. Yeah. And that yeah. is the main challenge that we see right now. Mm. So if you have polystyrene in itself, no problem. You can mm. go into a recycling scheme right away. Uh, our job is, of course, since we are very good in combining material, mm. we also mm. need to be better and improve in separating the material. Yeah. We are working together with uh, several universities. Mm -hmm. And right now we can tell um, and state it's not really difficult to use existing processes and mm -hmm. existing machines mm -hmm. to separate the material from each other. Mm -hmm. Here and there we need to adapt the, the machines of course because this is quite new material for those machines. It's mineral fractions combined with organic fractions, very light material with very heavy material. Mm -hmm. We know that we are creating dust when we crack mm -hmm. the material, but it's possible. Yeah. And now, of course, also my board members in my company, they mm -hmm. ask me, okay, great job, but uh, where's the profitability yeah, of, of it? Yeah. And I tell them, you know what? Sometimes we have a building being demolished in Munich, maybe one, once a year. Mm -hmm. Then we have a fraction of a building demolished in Münster mm -hmm. once a year. Then we have maybe another building in Berlin and Hamburg. And do you think there is enough amount of waste to build up a machine somewhere in Germany yeah. where the whole process will be profitable? No. So could we do it? Yes. And so th this is where we are at right now. So the, the challenge in creating that circle is actually that the circle becomes a line for a few decades and you have to weigh the lack of availability of the material that you would use to 
establish circularity. That's that's Absolutely. the challenge, the hurdle right now. Absolutely right. And if I, if I may add, the raw material producers, mm -hmm. they, of course, also need to know, do I get this material in a certain quantity, in a certain quality, over a certain period of time? Mm -hmm. If yes, yes, I will set up uh, a, pro a production line. Mm -hmm. If no, hmm, I don't know if I can handle it. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the main challenge right now. But Nicole, currently the, um, the, the, most, m m the highest amount of EPS material is still being incinerated after uh, end of life. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us more about how, how that works and why, maybe why it's not such a bad thing as it sounds? It's, it's really not a bad thing. So first of all, as we have discussed, um, the solvent-based technologies are not ready um, mm. at the moment. So it will take time. Uh, Polystyrene Loop, for instance, would like to build up a demo plant mm. and run different input streams and to assure that we finally have really a regranulate here, uh, which we can use and close the cycle. But in the meantime, of course, we rely on incineration of this material and mm. incineration is not as bad as, as it seems, it's a, a very valuable source because you generate energy mm -hmm. and also heat, uh, which will be provided for the society. And this is also an added value, especially when we uh, think about that uh, the use phase of the ethics system is so long. Yeah. yeah? And even after the use phase, uh, when you have saved a lot of energy consumption in your house, even there you have an added value uh, by by generating energy and heat. So I would say whatever we do uh, here with recycling, it's an investment into the future. And we are, I would say, daily working on this. Yeah. We know it's not coming from one day to another, um, but every day we have new, um, yeah, new results and come a little bit uh, further to the circularity of uh, ethics. Together. And that's, that's the main point. That's also our key theme here for K2019, empowering the future together. Seems like Sto and BASF are doing exactly that. Thank you, Eike. Exactly. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, very you much. so much. Thank you for the live talk. Thanks, everybody, for joining the live talk on the live stream. We'll be back in uh, 50 minutes with the next live talk at 12 here, German time in Düsseldorf. See you soon.